There is a once every four years event that lasts about 30 days and generates almost $5 billion in revenues. And FIFA, the organization that organizes the tournament, considers it to be a true cash cow. Yes, I am talking about the Football World Cup. Football has become a multi-billion dollar industry thanks to the madness and love of millions of people. As the FIFA World Cup for the year 2022 has just begun, I think it is the right time to talk about its economics. And a lot of you might be curious to know the answer of how FIFA makes money while being a non-profit organization, or where does it get its revenue from? So let me break down FIFA's economics for you. But before that, let's take a step back and start with the history. FIFA, also known as the International Federation of Association Football, was founded in 1904 and is responsible for overseeing, planning, and promoting international football games around the world. It boasts the biggest fan base of any sport in the world with more than 200 member countries. FIFA has been able to extend its roots throughout the world. Thanks to the FIFA's World Cup, a competition featuring 32 teams squaring off, generating billions in revenue with most of the earnings used to develop the game. Most people recognize the body through the FIFA World Cups that happen every four years. FIFA also plans and advertises for other international competitions, such as the Men's World Cup, Club World Cup, Under-20 World Cup, Under-17 World Cup, Futsal World Cup Men, Beach Soccer World Cup Men, etc. However, the FIFA World Cup is a global sporting occasion. Every four years, this event takes place. The host nation, however, varies each time. To obtain the right to host the next World Cup, nations must compete in bidding. The 2022 World Cup is being held in Qatar, and the US, Canada, and Mexico will jointly host the 2026 competition. With so many countries vying to host the World Cup, FIFA naturally gets a big bargaining chip and gets away with dictating most of the terms. And this makes us wonder, does FIFA give any money to the host country? Infrastructure built for the Cup is entirely the responsibility of the host country and FIFA makes no investments in it. However, a lot of money must be invested to successfully plan such a huge and popular event, particularly in the development and maintenance of first-rate infrastructure. As a result, the nation that submits the winning bid draws a lot of investment interest, which may stimulate the economy. For instance, in the 2014 World Cup, Brazil spent an estimated $15 billion building stadiums, transportation, and other infrastructure, and Qatar has spent more than $220 billion on the ongoing 2022 World Cup. But it does not pay for the host country directly in exchange for organizing and managing the tournament. Instead, it compensates the local organizing committee. Additionally, through development programs, FIFA allocates $100 million to the host country to assist grow football in a way that also benefits society. Now coming towards the main topic of our discussion, the economics of FIFA. Well, if we take a look at FIFA's complete profit and expenditure account, this will be easier to understand. So, let's break down FIFA's revenues, expenses and profits all one by one. First, let's have a quick look at how the football organization earns money. First way is the World Cup as FIFA's flagship product. The World Cup serves as FIFA's flagship product or service much like every other company. As the exclusive host of both the World Cup and the Women's World Cup, FIFA is entitled to all sponsorship fees. For instance, the 2015 to 2019 cycles total revenue was 83% driven by the FIFA World Cup. In fact, even the Olympics cannot compare to how much money is made at the World Cup. The qualifying rounds and championship of 2014 brought in $4.8 billion in income. And there was $4.6 billion in income in 2018, which was mostly driven by the success of the World Cup of 2018 in Russia. The second way it generates money is through executive rights. As FIFA is the only rights holder, they allow broadcasting and television casting to broadcast the event and other connected activities in the countries they choose by selling license rights to them. And you might be surprised to learn that last time in 2018, they generated about 55% of their entire revenue from the sale of exclusive rights, which are estimated to be worth $2.5 billion. In fact, 21st Century Fox Incorporated outbid ESPN, owned by Disney, in a bidding war and paid $400 million to FIFA for the television rights to the 2022 World Cup. Then comes branding and marketing. 
This refers to the money made from the sale of media and advertising rights for events as well as some agreements with sponsors that wish to be associated with the FIFA brand. Moreover, although FIFA is a non-profit organization, but as we've seen, it has a very commercial approach as indicated by the fact that it has a dedicated line of official FIFA branded items. Next is FIFA's hospitality rights and ticket sales. Another contribution to FIFA's revenue stream are ticket sales, as well as rights to hospitality and lodging. 100% of match day ticket revenue is owned by a FIFA subsidiary. In fact, 2.3% or $148 million of FIFA's overall revenue for the 2015 to 2019 period came from accommodations and hospitality. Again, the FIFA World Cup alone accounts for the majority of this component. And the last factor that is worth mentioning is gaming rights. Did you ever consider that FIFA derives a sizable portion of their revenue from video games? According to the FIFA 2020 financial report, video games accounted for roughly half of their entire earnings, which is fairly impressive. They generated $266.5 million in total revenue, with licensing rights contributing over $158.9 million. Now, if we move towards FIFA's expenses, FIFA also has some costs and expenses that it must cover while it works to improve the game. FIFA's financial report for 2015 to 2018 shows that the organization spent $5.36 billion on costs associated with events, $2.56 billion, projects connected to development and education, $1.67 billion, and FIFA governance and administration, $797 million. Other expenses include digital marketing, referees, travel, and lodging, which totaled $668 million at the 2014 World Cup, but only a projected $283 million during the 2018 World Cup. Then comes the prize money. You must be wondering how much prize money does FIFA, World Football's governing body, distribute among the teams taking part in the World Cup. There were $791 million in total prizes awarded for the 2018 World Cup in Russia, a major increase over the $576 million awarded at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Aside from prize money, each team receives $1.5 million to prepare for the World Cup. FIFA additionally rewards the teams whose members compete in the World Cup. Now, putting it all together, we can clearly see that FIFA produces a sizable surplus from the World Cup. For example, the 2014 World Cup brought in $4.8 billion in income for FIFA, resulting in a $2.6 billion profit for the organization. Likewise, the 2018 World Cup was an even bigger financial success. $5.36 billion compared to $1.82 billion in expenses. So, it is FIFA that makes the most profits. And if we talk about the FIFA's revenue for 2022, Johnny Infantino, the president of FIFA, recently disclosed that the organization aims to generate a record $7 billion in revenue from the World Cup in Qatar. In fact, the anticipated profit for the event in 2022 is expected to be in the neighborhood of $3 billion. However, FIFA is currently budgeting the 2022 World Cup for a total revenue of $4.67 billion. The three categories that the governing body divided the expected revenues into are $2.64 billion would come from the sale of broadcasting rights, marketing rights will bring $1.35 billion, $500 million through the sale of tickets and hospitality rights. Now, you must be thinking what FIFA uses the surplus generated by the World Cup for. Well, FIFA plans and budgets itself on a four-year cycle and arranges its investments so that they make little to no net revenue throughout that time. And although it can live tax-free, but this also necessitates that it uses its earnings or profits on fulfilling its football goals. So, it is invested in the same four period into governance and football development and training to realize FIFA's strategic vision. Hence, the majority of FIFA's money is reinvested, while some of any profits are kept back to build up a financial reserve. And according to FIFA, the reserve is crucial since it is very challenging to acquire insurance to cover a potential last-minute cancellation of a World Cup. Now, there is an important thing that I want to highlight here. Given that FIFA World Cup is the primary source of FIFA's income, in May 2021, the governing body of world football, the FIFA, addressed that it wants to host a World Cup every two years rather than every four, as this would result in a sports event that generates more than $4.4 billion in income over a four-year cycle. 
With those figures, it's simple to see why FIFA is advocating for a World Cup that occurs every two years. More World Cups means more income. However, an event as popular as FIFA World Cup could easily lose its significance, decreasing its value to broadcasters and making them less eager to pay if it's occurring twice as frequently. Moreover, there are some key challenges as well. FIFA has occasionally been accused of poor administration and malpractice in relation to the World Cup bidding process. On suspicion of corruption, the president and other executives who were mentioned in the 2015 controversy were detained. Hence, earning enormous sums of money at each tournament is not guaranteed. Therefore, in order to keep the sources of their revenues in the future, FIFA's plan must be to support the development of this sport by focusing on its current projects as well as clearing out uncertainties about the future of the ongoing corruption. Lastly, as long as football is the most popular sport in the world, FIFA will expand with an incredible speed and be able to establish new revenue streams. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below on the breakdown of FIFA's revenue. We'll be happy to hear from you. And if you found this video informative and enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button as well. Thanks for watching.